Hi, my name is Wojtek Kaliciński, and this is Android Tool Time with what's new in Android Studio 2.3. After the feature-packed release that was 2.2, we are starting the new year with Android Studio 2.3, which offers many refinements and fixes to existing components, as well as some exciting new features. The first thing I'd like to mention is the overhaul of the Instant Run UI. We followed advice from developers and now provide two buttons, Run, which you will use to deploy and start your app, and apply changes for any subsequent code and resource modifications. This uses Instant Run to quickly update the running app using cold, warm, or hot swap, and now requires a device or emulator running Lollipop and above. In case you happen to see any unexpected problems, you can always use the Run button again to force a full app restart. Speaking about speeding up build times, in Android Gradle plugin 2.3, We've now enabled the build cache by default. The build cache is a shared directory on your machine where libraries are extracted and compiled to be used across all projects, making both incremental and full builds faster. We've also made some general performance improvements in Project Sync and the Gradle integration in this version of Android Studio and moved to Gradle version 3.3. The IDE itself brings the new features of the IntelliJ 2016.2 release, such as the new inspections tool window overhauled notifications, breadcrumbs in the Java editor, and more. The layout editor received some updates too. In the palette window, we now show widget previews and support sorting and filtering by name. The property inspector here on the right now lets you add the most used properties to your favorites for quick access on the overview page. And finally, the visual editor has a new set of controls and refined visuals for constraint layout editing including new icons, an easier way of adding baseline handles, and support for two big features of the constraint layout, chains and ratios. By the way, constraint layout is now the default when creating new projects with Android Studio templates. Moving on, the vector drawable import dialog received a small but highly requested upgrade. You can now search the material icons catalog by name, which makes it a lot easier to locate the one you need. For raster images, we've added WebP support in the IDE. WebP is an image compression format developed at Google that can replace both JPEG and PNG images with smaller file sizes and similar quality. You can now convert images to WebP straight from the IDE by right-clicking on a file or folder and selecting Convert to WebP. Since WebP support varies across Android versions, We've also added lint checks that look at the content of your images and will warn you if they're not compatible with the min SDK version in your project. Next up, we have the AppLinks Assistant. It guides you through the process of adding AppLinks support to your app, which includes creating intent filters for URLs, modifying activity code to handle those intents, and generating a digital asset links file for your website. For fans of lint, we have some new and updated lint checks we now support additional annotations, such as restrict to and visible for testing. And the lint report HTML file now has a material design look with syntax highlighting. The biggest addition, however, is lint baseline support, which lets you save the current set of known lint errors and ignore them for future builds. This gives you a way of progressively dealing with technical debt in your project, while still having the benefit of being informed about any new warnings and errors that you might introduce. In the SDK tools, we've recently added a command line interface for the SDK Manager called SDK Manager. You can use it to automate installing or updating SDK components, for example, in scripts or on your CI server. And lastly, the Espresso test recorder you know from previous Android Studio versions gained a few improvements and is now considered stable. So you can use it for adding Espresso UI tests to your applications. Follow our account on Twitter if you have any questions about the new version and for the latest Android Studio news and tips. Thanks for watching, and for more Android Studio videos, click here.